I don't know if you can see there, you know, the cockpit is gluing together rather nicely, but we've got this piece here. It's piece in the instructions F34 right there. And what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to pull it up and remove it. And I'm gonna have to do this because in step one it asks you to stick that stick that down. Um, however, you can't have that in place and then get in our instrument display panel right like so because what needs to happen is is that little hole there piece f34 will go into our hole like so um, and you kind of need to glue it in like that rather than gluing f34 four in first and then put the instrument display panel on top um, you can't get it in that way um, so it's something that you might want to kind of leave off um, or something like that because I mean really when it comes to instrument display panels um, you kind of want to leave them off because I mean if they're actually on the model you can't get access to them to paint them spray them weather them um, same with the seat as well I'm leaving the seat on glue because if we glued in our seat our instrument display panel and we had all these different things in here it just gives our accessibility to the whole model um, you know it just limits it so we want to kind of leave a few things out just so that we can spray them separately um, so it probably means leaving F35 out spray that separately sadly that tiny little piece um, to then put it in after you put the instrument display panel in there is a little bit of a confusing issue with F40 and F41 which um, we've got F40 in my hand right now and that is the instructions aren't very clear on exactly where it goes um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you exactly where it goes so that you won't have any problems putting this together um, now it, where it exactly goes is on here right um, you've basically got these two let's bring you in even closer because we're getting a bit small not too close there we go we've basically got these two little kind of pegs sticking out just here and here and basically they need to line up nicely um, with our piece 40 but they just shy of a hair don't quite line up just right which then makes you think is this actually in the right position that is actually the right position right but we just need to kind of just lightly trim uh, just inside maybe maybe a bit of a scrape with a blade and we just need to kind of just lightly trim it just so it fits on those little those little tabs a little bit better just like I'm doing there and hopefully that little bit of a, a trim is gonna allow that to fit in a little bit better which it does I mean it just need that little bit of a trim although it might need a slight hair more but let's I'm gonna risk it let's see if a little bit of um, uh, extra thin cement will actually melt the plastic a bit and let that little hairline kind of slightly almost not fit in start fitting which it has done right so now we can get some glue and let the capillary action flow into all those kind of little corners there I can push it down I'm using uh, some tweezers to push it down because if I use my fingers I'm probably going to get um, the glue go onto my fingers and then that will smudge all the plastic and the plastic will melt into like smudged fingerprint marks right so um, kind of take a mental picture of exactly where those tabs are and where piece 40, F40 is and I'll just show the other side as well so you basically you want to look at the little squares that we've got in here look for the little tab marks where you've got the one there and then you've got the other tab mark there and just kind of line that up with your model and you'll get it right but the, the instructions really don't show you how exactly that goes on um, now we can get down to some spraying because I mean we've glued mostly everything that we want to glue here um, we do have our seats our instrument display panel separate what we can do is I like to just keep some cocktail sticks with a bit of blue tack on and we can get the back of our instrument display panel right, with our bit of blue tack on and there we go we've got free access to spray all that um, apart from okay the back has got some blue tack on it but we're not going to see the back so 
we don't have to worry about that. We can do the same with the seat or in actual case we can get some of these tweezers, these are quite nice. There's a little bit we can hook onto there and we can spray that separately as well. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to spray it um, XA1117 which is interior green. Um, the kind of the interior green for any kind of um, World War II fighter. People kind of go on about the different colours and some, you know, I mean, me personally, I find that the extra acrylic interior green is a nice green, it does the job quite nicely, um, and I'm not too fussed about it, but I mean, you can go on the internet and you can research all the different colours you can use to do your interior green if you really want to get it really right but I'm quite happy with this one being quite a nice standard interior green for pretty much any World War II fighter. Now I'm going to spray this off camera in the, the spray booth just to speed things up I and mean, when we can really get into and talk about spraying um, when we get into the actual spray stage but for now I'm just going to spray this up off camera interior green. Interior green has nicely been applied and left for about 15 minutes to dry. Um, so we can leave that, but what we've got here, we've got some, um, uh, our seat. Our seat, really, I mean, because I'm not too keen on the, um, the interior of this kit out of the box, I'm, I'm probably going to close the canopy. Um, but even with a closed canopy, I find the one thing that you kind of get to see the most when you've got a closed canopy is the seat or an ejector seat, right? So when you close canopy, you really do want to kind of put some effort into your seat. Now this seat is as plain as they come. I mean, that is it. So what I'm doing here is I'm using some jammy dog tape, which is the one mil fixed off, to just make some um, seat belts. Now, you might think, okay, that doesn't look that good, but trust me, it's you're not paying for anything, and it's the quickest, easiest way of just putting some seat belts on there, just to give it some sort of life. Um, now, what I've done is I've gone with um, one of these. Let's just cut one off using some scissors. All right, we can cut a bit off. All right, and what we can do is try and put this on as carefully as possible. Right, so actually I'm coming in from the wrong way, let's turn that a little bit. Right, and what we want to do is around about the length we want it, we want to kind of start this end first. Ish. There we go. And then what we can do is we can then just wrap that around and we can let that go all the way down. Right, and we could probably chop off whatever excess we, excess we got here. Try to anyway, there we go. And we ain't got to worry about that because we ain't really going to see the back of there. Um, but what we also want to do is to try and give our seat belt a bit more life. So we want to kind of, using whatever tiny tools we can, we can just sort of like pull this back up a bit and then we can start sort of you know maybe put some kind of bends creases in here you know turning it around and stuff and trying to just get it to you know fall back down with a bit of a a natural look to it right, almost like so and just kind of keep playing with it until I'm happy you've got a bit of natural kind of look to it. Um, I've got another piece, a third piece of our jammy dog tape just here as well, which um, we're just going to fold right over if we can. Right, we're just going to fold this right over and bring it to the other side and just stick that down. Right. And we can probably send it right under just to make sure it's not going to go anywhere. i push that down a bit. And then what we can do, just to sort of finish this off, is we can come in with a blade. And cut that right down the middle. Right, so then we end up with our two little straps that you normally get just underneath there and that's just made a very simple quite quick but would be I mean you just got to remember it's so quick and easy but you haven't paid for any kind of photo etch to achieve some seat belts um, 
but it's not going to look as good as like your photo etch or anything like that but I mean it's good enough to kind of give that bit of an illusion we're going to close the canopy so it's um you know it's going to be a bit sort of faded with the canopy closed you can't quite see with the canopy closed so you're kind of seeing all oh, we've got some seat belts going on in there um, so what we need to do now is just start doing some actual hand brush painting here we're now going to look into some actual hand painting now for this i'm using citadel which is games workshop paints uh, now they're expensive i know you pay a premium for them but they actually are the best paints i use anyway for actual brush painting every other paint i use is better for spraying but this is definitely um, the best for um, brush painting i'm going to be using abaddon black for this using a bit of a palette we can just get a little bit of um, water plain simple water or then again i mean you can use maybe some sort of acrylic thinners um, but getting a bit of abaddon black after a bit of a shake right we just want to mix to kind of like a nice consistency we don't want it to be thick we don't want it be sorry we don't want it to be too thick that um, we end up with brush strokes but we don't want it too thin that we end up having to put about 10 coats down to get good coverage um, what's also a little good little tip is flow improver a little bit of this to the mix does help that nice little bit to um, kind of give it that nice bit of flow and help it kind of like go on and it, it just generally helps the kind of whole painting process All right so now we can kind of I like to kind of twist my paintbrush and move it along and I'm just looking for a nice kind of not thick but not too thin kind of um, paint mix here so then what I can do is we can come to our instrument display panels um, maybe take one of our side ones here and we just want to paint this black right now actually looking at this this paint is probably a little bit on the thin side because that is going to take a couple of coats to get that all nice and black um, but as you can see what we're doing we're just painting certain areas I'm just going by the instructions I'm not really looking at uh, much of a reference photo here with this one I'm just kind of taking a bit of a, a relaxed approach to this build uh, and what we're going to do we're just going to follow instructions and paint what parts need to be black um, we've got some leather bits to kind of paint just at the top of here um, and where else on the seat as well we've got a bit of a leather seat going on there um, but really it's kind of black leather um, the odd bit of silver here and there but you know it's nothing too complicated Right. and with painting what you also want to remember is try not to brush in the same area too much because what happens is you paint down um, paint on here and if you keep going over the same area over and over again as it's trying to dry that's where you start getting brush strokes because it's trying to dry and as it dries the paint um, kind of loses its moisture so as you go across it when you put a brush stroke across it's going to leave a brush stroke which is why we thin paints down because it thins it down so that um, you know you don't get those brush strokes so that's what we want to do all in this cockpit area now So as you can see what we've done is we've plain and simply put down the base paint what I mean by base paint is we've sprayed it green we've painted a couple, painted a couple of bits black a uh, couple of bits like a leather color you know and that's it I mean it's just flat base colors um, and what I want to look at now just touch on is something called highlighting I mean we don't really do it much in um, should we say aircraft modeling uh, kind of sense but what it basically is is you kind of thin down your paint so I'm using um, a bam blade brown here some weird names by Citadel but it's basically a nice little a brown to highlight up some leather and what we do is we just simply thin it down to a thinner consistency than normal right we're basically making our paint quite transparent right so when I paint this on here we're hardly going to actually um, see it it's just going to give a very faint highlight and it's still going to bring through our kind of our, um, uh, our um, leather type color coming through still um, so what we can do is we just basically we can take our edges 
right, just like so and we can just give them a light little paint where the edges are maybe a bit too much paint on the end of that paintbrush right, so it's just a little bit of an edge here and an edge there using our paint and what it does it just gives it that little bit of a highlight right we're not talking massive changes here and the whole point of highlighting as well is to kind of it's got to go be built up in layers right so you kind of want to start off with maybe going closer to our original kind of leather color and then you want to kind of go lighter and lighter and lighter and get finer and finer and getting closer and closer to the edge as you kind of come down in the colors getting lighter and lighter um, so that's basically um, a little bit of highlighting but I mean really that's a complete um, different step-by-step -step video build on like basically painting miniatures and doing highlights and stuff but it was just a quick touch just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about a bit um, the next thing we can do as well is we can add some um, Citadel washes to the mix as well um, to kind of liven things up now I'm going to use kind of different washes for the rest of the cockpit but just for like our um, sort of fabric-y area i.e. our seat belts, our, uh, our actual leather sort of seat here and there's a little bit more leather just there as well. I just want to put this wash on and what we simply do with this is we just cake it on, right? There is no messing about, there is no you know, tickling this, right? We are literally coming along and we're caking on this wash. And the cool thing is about this wash as well, is, well, shall we say some people might find it an advantage, some people might find it a disadvantage, is um, where, when you paint it on, it goes where you paint it right so there is no capillary action with this wash whereas a lot of washes washes you'll find it has a capillary action it will flow oops that just flew off one second let's make sure I can get that there we go back on our little tweezers there um, yeah as I was saying the um, the wash most washes will have a capillary action it will flow everywhere which can be an advantage for a wash but with this particular wash it goes where you paint it so it won't flow around which can be an advantage and a disadvantage in its um, you know by itself so it's kind of good to have lots of different washes because they will have different characteristics for what you want them to do whereas in this case I want my wash to go where I'm painting it, oh yeah, I'm painting these um, these um, seat belts here and I want them to stay on the seat belts. I don't want it fly, uh, flowing off and running off all around this piece here. I want it to go where I'm painting it. Um, so that's why I like the Citadel washes. Now coming in to use a bit of white to nicely paint up any kind of dials or buttons we have. Now I'm coming in here with a size zero brush which is um, kind of quite big considering for this kind of scale. Right, and all I'm doing is just with the tip of the brush I'm just touching any kind of raised sort of buttons or anything like that, any kind of detail that I can just bring it out and highlight it, bring it out to the foreground, giving ourselves some detail. Oops, make a little bit of a mistake, don't worry, carry on. We can um, paint back in with some black afterwards. Good technique for those, maybe with a bit of an unsteady hand, you might want to say come in with maybe a cocktail stick. Right, we can do the same sort of thing but with a cocktail stick and just kind of rub it sort of on our raised area wherever we want it. However, it doesn't really hold the paint so it can get a little bit of an annoying but it's a nice another technique. And that's what we want to do. We want to kind of highlight all these white bits but what we could also do, we could uh, thin down our white even more to the point where it's really nice and thin. 
and what we can do we can get our instrument display panel and we can use the thinness of the paint so it's got lots of capillary action to literally touch our um, dials here and what you're seeing is you're touching it you're not actually painting around this circle and painting an actual circle in here you're letting the capillary action just touch it and let it just kind of flow around our circle dials here and that brings them out really nice and we can use this same technique once this white has dried but using gloss All right so after painting white on paint some gloss on here and we'll make these look like glass which will add a nice extra effect so there you go those have been nicely painted in nice and easy using capillary action to do all the work hopefully as you can see there all right so I'm just going to finish off all these little bits what I want to look at using now is um, Citadel's Dry Compound, it's the Necron Compound and um, it's basically it's um, a lazy man's way of dry brushing, um, it's a paint designed as I say to be kind of a bit lazy because um, instead of kind of going off and using say normal paints, any kind of paint uh, and dry brushing that way, which you can do these um, dry compounds, they kind of um, just make it easier to make a, a dry brush um, and it just seems to go on a little bit better and as you can see inside there, it's literally um, almost dried up paint but it isn't quite dry um, hence the name kind of dry brushing in a way and what we can do, we can just on a paper towel right, we can just kind of rub this into the brush and start rubbing it off of the brush until it's almost kind of gone and then what we can do we can get our, our piece here and it will come up on black really really nice and you might be able to just say that it will just bring up any kind of raised edge, edges wherever you kind of brush it now when brushing it on you want to kind of remember that when you first start brushing it it's probably going to have the most paint at that point right so you've only got to lightly touch it and it will bring up any kind of silver bits any raised areas or anything like that so really when you're first putting this on be careful but then as you start slowly kind of like brushing through you'll notice that it gets harder and harder for the um, the silver to start dry brushing onto um, whatever it is you're dry brushing so then you can start adding a little bit more pressure which is what I'm kind of doing now I'm just slowly adding a little bit more pressure as we go along And hopefully as you've seen it really does bring up black rather nicely gives it a bit of detail to do it to it it almost gives it almost like you know very fine kind of um, chipping of paint and that kind of stuff and we can also get inside our cockpit area here as well and really give this kind of nice bit of raised detail a bit of a good scene too as well as well as back here we've got a bit of internal um, wheel wells here the rear wheel well right and hopefully as you can see just on camera there that just kind of brings it up with that little bit of a kind of a, a shine to it a little bit of a, a rough edge of, of, of the um, aluminium showing through the paint kind of thing so I'm going to do all the dry brushing here for this model with the dry brushing now done it's added our first layer of weathering up and making our cockpit look natural um, because we can't just leave it with a bit of a dry brush of silver on there because it's not going to look that good I mean we've done the flat painting, the flat base painting we've put some um, uh, our uh, um, dry brush in it and now we want to kind of add some washes you know add a bit of dirt grime, shadows, dirty areas you know kind of make the nooks and crannies look a bit darker and dirtier now I'm going to use this one, I'm going to use a neutral wash by MIG production it's an enamel base wash so we get all the um, the enamel pigments kind of sedimenting at the bottom so we really really need to give this a damn good shake 
Um, so as you can tell, I cut away there just to actually be able to like shake that up. You really do need to give it a damn good shake. And what we could do, I'm using a wash brush by Citadel. Um, we can dip this in, right, and we simply apply the wash everywhere. We don't just apply it everywhere, but we be quite generous with it as well. Because right, this is the kind of wash where we apply it, we well, we let it do it a bit of it. No, sorry, we let it do its magic, and then what we do is we clean it up the way we want it after we've uh, let it dry a little bit. So as you can see from just whacking that on there, that was nice, quick, and easy, and that's just going to nicely flow. It's got a nice bit of capillary reaction to just flow in and everywhere where we want it. And it's going to start making that look a bit grubby and grimy, but it's probably going to be a bit too in your face when it dries. So we'll tidy it up in a bit. So I'm just going to do the rest.